businesses tend to focus on revenue, profits, and getting loyal customers. But how about healthy workplace culture? You're listening to How I Turned the Corner, where Kendra Prospero leads eye-opening conversations that most business leaders avoid. The right way to address employee challenges. Listen to real-life stories of workplace struggles, giving you valuable advice on what must be done to make every employee truly satisfied and fulfilled in their job. This is for leaders who want to create great company cultures and for employees who want to do something to put an end to suffering at work in the most practical ways possible. Here's your host, Kendra. Many of us founders and CEOs struggle with cash and paying our people enough. And while pay is extremely important because we don't volunteer for work, I know it's not the only reason people come to work. We can create cultures where people feel like they belong, treat them well, and pay them decent. And that can be enough to keep employees longer than just giving them tons of money and not caring for them. My guest today has experienced this for the last 13 years. John Aiken is the CEO and founder of Web Canopy, a top HubSpot partner and marketing agency. He's located in a small town, and when he started in 2010, he had limited access to talent. And he's found really unique ways to bring people into his company and more importantly, keep them. John Aiken, welcome to How I Turned the Corner. Hey, thank you so much, Kendra. I appreciate it. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about some of the the journey you had in the early days. I heard another podcast that you did where you talked about leveraging the local universities. And so tell us about the early days Mm -hmm. of of your company and, and how you built your team. Yeah, certainly. So a lot of where we uh, kind of kind of built our name in and what we do revolved around a lot of website development, specifically inside of people using HubSpot. HubSpot has a CMS website platform and kind of in the earlier days of that platform, there weren't a lot of people getting really involved in it. Uh, HubSpot is a marketing automation suite and, then, and now a really amazing CRM and, and beyond. And so the the CMS or the website functionality has been evolving as well. But back in those earlier days when I started the company, it was just me and I was just kind of doing things on my own. You know, I, I wanted to be my own boss and, and not have to go back to get a corporate job somewhere. And I was living in like feast or famine mode of and bring in a lot of projects. And then I'd sit there and work on all those projects and the projects would be done. And I'd be like, well, crap, I have to buy food. I have to like pay my bills. Like, what am I supposed to do? So we got in, I I got in the situation of just, I was like, I'm slammed with work or I have no work. And so I knew that I couldn't, I I couldn't continue in a system where I was managing everything by myself. And so when it was time to bring somebody on, um, I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy having conversations all the time and giving advice and coaching and, and all of that. So I knew I would probably do most of the sales in the initial part. So I wasn't really looking to bring on a ton of salespeople or anything like that. Um, we started in the uh, the developer side. And so if I could just help offload some of the extra work that I was doing, that would be a good start. Um, had, had some great experience with some people uh, that I had known and they did some part-time work for me, but where it really started to take off and kind of the 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 example that you were just sharing was um, really looking at leveraging a local community college and working with their students in an internship program and kind of creating this three to six month process inside of our company to where I could I could hire an intern. I could coach them and train them on the systems that I was really trying to help lift up and and evolve and to build out not only for our company and our clients, but for the developing HubSpot community as well. And that program was, was really, really successful because essentially when I, when I built that relationship or leveraged that local relationship, we're able to have this person come on, they're training with me, they're fully bought in onto what we're doing and they're fully trained by the time they leave to be exactly what I would want in an, in an entry level employee. And so we were able to then start hiring the people that were graduating. You know, I might pay them hourly while they're finishing their senior year or something like that and give them beer money in college, you know, but um, <laughs> they, they would they would have uh, they would have essentially a full time job waiting on them when they'd wrap up. And that worked very, very well for us. And we still do it today. 
Wow, that's so neat. So I hear so many people complain about this incoming generation, and I don't agree with that at all. I have a couple of Zoomers on my team that are amazing. So have how have yeah. you navigated that? I mean, do you do what's your been your experience with with the incoming generation? I think there's a mix. I think you just like in any generation, you're going to see people who really don't want to work and people who really do, and they're looking for what they want to do next. And it's tough. I think looking at I've definitely had my handful of interviews of people in college that I've or people who are graduating college looking for a job and I'm like mm, okay you I probably see you here for three months before you're done and you go somewhere else and then I've had my very nice background of experience in talking to people who come in and they're just phenomenal and they're ready to to, to give their all and and to be you know pretty hungry uh, f- for the work that we're doing to me though it's about the way that I position our company and how I treat them. I was an intern too when I was in college. And although I have a great relationship with the people that I interned with, I literally was a, a peon for this company to do anything that they needed. I was a courier to run things around town. I was getting coffee for people. I was like printing documents and doing all of this stuff. And you know, to, to anybody else in this 50 person company, they never looked at me twice. And That is not what this younger generation wants to see. They want to be a part of something. They want to, they want to contribute to something. And so the interns that I have now, we just had one over the summer. I had a, a a kid, he just, he was actually just graduated uh, college and he was looking for an internship. I brought him on and said, work for us for the summer, you know, three months, we'll, we'll pay you and uh, see how it goes. And if it's something that you want to explore beyond that, and it's a good fit for us. We'll continue the conversation. If not, you at least have something really nice for your resume. And we brought him into meetings right away. Like, yeah. especially, so we're in the world, we're in the world of marketing and website. So I want new ideas. I right. want what's trending, what's happening. There's no one that's going to know that better than people who are literally the target demographic of, of this kind of, of uh, thing that we're doing. So, yeah. And then that we, gave that gentleman a, a job once his, uh, his position was is done as an intern. And so he's a full-time employee for us now. That's great. I love that. I think that's just such a good idea. Um, we're Thank in, you. we're based out of Boulder, Colorado. So we have, we're surrounded by so many universities and I just, I really like this idea. I want to sort of think about how I could do it with my company. <laughs> yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then, so then now how many employees do you have now? About 15? You got about 15. Yep. Okay, great. And so um, tell me a little bit more about like the kinds of people that you you prefer to have on your team. Great question. It's been a it's been quite a mix for us, especially since the pandemic. We I started the company. We were in Indiana. Uh, My family and I moved to Traverse City, Michigan uh, in 2017. And we love it up here. It's a beautiful city. It's a very great small community. We have uh, most of the team, well, pretty much all the team was in Traverse City when when the pandemic hit. And I thought we would be an in-office company only for you know, my entire life. I thought that's what we were going to we were going to do. And then when the pandemic hit and we all went remote, we had to figure something out because we weren't going to be in the office anymore. And, you know, again, I thought it was going to be a short term thing. We would all come back in three or four months or something like that. And we didn't, we still had the office. People really enjoyed working at home. And you know what? My staff was doing great and I enjoyed being at my house as well. And so we kept everybody remote. And when we made that shift, it it totally opened up the doors for us because we weren't confined to just bringing people to Traverse City to be an employee or working with just the people in Traverse City who are already here. And so, which is, amazing like the people here are great and we were brought on some amazing staff but it definitely expanded and opened the doors to who we could communicate with and bring on our team we now have people that work for us in europe our director of operations is in portugal i have staff in hawaii i have staff uh, kind of all over and so that has been phenomenal I totally went on a side tangent by the way but but to me to answer your question the kind of people that i like to bring on are the kind of people that are a good fit here are, are really just good people really genuine we we have um i don't know your policy on this podcast we have a no assholes policy mm-hmm. in our company and so we that have applies a no to jerks our, one yep exactly exactly yeah. right and it, it applies to clients that we bring on if i get the vibe or whoever's in the sales process gets the vibe that this is not a good fit because of an ego or an attitude it's like look we're 
I have references that I'd love to send to you. This is not going to be a good fit for us. But it's the same way for our staff too. And so uh, the, the core values and, and the way that we hire and we train and that we look for our staff to develop over time is built around who these people are and how they communicate with each other and how they treat each other. Mm, I love that. Yeah, we have the same same policy too. It just no jerks, but it's been um, it's been so powerful to 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 have it be applied to both the team as well as the the um, companies that we you know that are our customers. Yeah. I've walked away from customers that I just. I knew we're not going to be good fits for us because of that. And I don't want to put my staff through that. I don't want to, I don't want no. to work with those people and I don't want to ask my staff to do that. So I'm totally with you on that. Yeah. It's, it's really important. I think too many people see dollar signs and want to go after it because it's money. We've had massive deals that we just, I couldn't do, or we, we went through an initial project with somebody for three months and then we got to stop this. Like, right. Hey, wrap it up, finish it up. We're out. Right. Well, yeah. Cause ultimately you end up losing so much money on those projects generally because you just can't mm -hmm. you can't serve those customers yeah so now i mean to tell us about some of the unique things you do to keep these these 15 people you know in, mm -hmm. in community together especially if they're all over the world now excellent question so we have a success profile and this is relatively new it's take it's evolved over time uh over the last several years we've gone through a lot of different models we've really kind of landed on on kind of our own system now but we have a success profile for each of the positions in the company. And the success profile looks at things like, what are the top five responsibilities for this, for this position, not this person? This position should maintain these top five responsibilities. We have core values. We have five core values that, you know, core values can be so fluffy and people, oh, we have these core values. Like, okay, great. But do you actually live and breathe by what these core values are? And so we list those core values and on the success profile, we look at the characteristics or the skill set that we're trying to uh, hone in on it and constantly develop. And so the way that we like to evaluate this is to have quarterly reviews and we're, we're going through with the staff member as well as the leadership team. And we say, okay, for this position, we have this person and let's evaluate on a scale of one to three one of each of these each of these five different core values or responsibilities so one being they don't really exude that core value all the time three being they they really do it almost all the time and two is kind of in the middle we used to do a broad spectrum of like one to ten but like how do you tell the difference between a six and a seven honestly mm -hmm, totally. come on it's totally ambiguous so we've modeled that that's been really powerful because the staff member has to do an honest and and really clear self-evaluation of where they're at and then we have that same honest feedback from a leadership team. And it's never a situation where it's like, hey, you are not this core value. You are really doing a bad job. It's like, hey, is something going on this, you know, the last three quarters we've talked about this. You're in a good space. Something's happening. What's up? Do you want to have a one on one? You want to chat through this and so on? Because oftentimes there's usually something that's underlying any kind of thing that that would skew performance. And it gives you a really great path to move forward. So that would probably be one thing is just continuous evaluation from a place of, of love and, and, and care, as opposed to a place of like looking down at the staff on, on the factory floor and seeing who's performing and who's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. I, I totally agree with you too, about the values. I mean, one of the things we, we do is really work with leaders to get clear on like, are they really your values? I mean, because mm -hmm. they can look great on a wall or sound great to a customer, but if you're not really living them, then they're completely pointless. And if right. anything, it creates confusion for the staff because they're like, well, I, he said this, but he's really doing that. So where is his heart really? Yeah. And, you know, we don't, we don't, people don't like to feel insecure about stuff like that. We want to feel secure yeah. around it. And that, um, so I totally agree with you. When I first opened up my business, I was like, Okay, I came from IBM. I mean, IBM mm. was a you know great employer. I learned a ton there, but they didn't live their values. I mean, yeah, the value should have just been make money because that's really all they focused on, right? Uh. And so I was so dubious of all that. And then, um, but but you know, so many people talked about it, and I was like, well, okay, I'll pay attention to it. And that's when I realized, like, when you really get clear around, like, what do you expect? from your employees. That's how mm -hmm. I see it now. Like, what do I expect from the team? And the values we came up with right away are the ones we still live by, which is amazing to me because I would have thought that over time they would have shifted a lot, but 
they really are our core values. And yeah. every person I've lost, if I've let go or has left, it's because of a values misalignment. Mm -hmm. Has that I been think, your experience? Yes. Yeah, so I think trusting your gut too, because I, I, we first explored this idea of core values, I don't know, six, seven years ago. And I, I really just looked at it from a gut check perspective. We had other people join leadership team. We modified core values because of like group chat and group think. And then at the end of the day, we kind of left the original intent of what we were trying to do in, in the first place. And so I went back to the gut check and was like, ah, it just doesn't, something doesn't feel right. Like this is, this is the, this is the core value. This is the intent of what this company should be. And so that gut check personality inside is like really important to listen to. I think, mm -hmm. do you, w let me ask you a question when you were doing, uh, or when you're working with other companies and you're expanding, um, I guess the horizons of core values, do you find that there's a lot of resistance to that and other people? I'm just curious. Well, I think we have to get over the sort of idea that they, it is fluffy. That's the first kind of yeah. barrier I find is that people like you and I are like, you know, just same thing. Like this is, is this real? But once right. you get to the place where the leader really is owning it and feels safe with like saying like no assholes or, you know, mm -hmm. no jerks or whatever, like being able to say that out loud and like really live it, then I find that it just, it just catches hold. So, um, but some of them, some leaders are resistant to it too, because they want to, they want to collaborate with their team, which I very much appreciate, but at the end of the day, all, everything's going to trickle down from that leader. So mm -hmm. if the leader doesn't believe in it because he's co she, he or she has co-collaborated with their team and they don't actually ultimately really feel that way, then it doesn't stick. It just mm -hmm. isn't, it just doesn't last. And so that's, that's the other thing point. I see kind of fall apart over time is when it hasn't really come from the leader. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of tricky because I do agree completely with that idea of collaborating to a point though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so, good. I think input is good. And I still today, like we have a leadership team. I rely on these people so much, but at the end of the day, like, uh, I really, the, the inside of the core of the company, if something moves away from that, I'm going to probably step in a little bit stronger with my opinion on that. But I try to not do that in case I, we, you know, we absolutely have to. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Well, how I did it when I first started, the, we started exploring the values. I had maybe five employees at that point was I wrote out a just super messy paragraph around like what mm -hmm. I expected. And then brought that messy paragraph as sort of the outline. And then we modified it from there. So there was still that chance for the input and the collaboration. And then every year when we do our annual kind of plan for the upcoming year, we review the values again and say, do we still feel this way? But mm -hmm. um, it hasn't shifted, like I said. So yeah, it seems yeah. to be aligned. So with your, with your, the staff that you currently have then too, with the folks you've got, um, what, I mean, what, what have been reasons or what have been things that have come up for you recently that people are asking for that you were like, Oh, hadn't thought of that before. Like, give us a little bit of insight into the, the horizon and what, what you're experiencing. From a staff perspective, as far as what, like benefits or what do you mean? Yeah. Or anything like what are people asking for that, that you, that's just been a bit surprising to you. Hmm. That's, that's a tough question. I don't know. We're, we're really open as far as what we allow inside of the company because I we are fair. Everybody's fairly autonomous. The, the the one thing that I think has been the most request is more advice on situations of how to handle specific things, as opposed to people just kind of free for all. I'm just going to run my accounts and and figure something out on my own. I think being able to let your staff be autonomous and just know like here's here's the goal here are the the best case scenario worst case scenario outcomes of what could happen here's what i would like to see happen and these are the guardrails right here's the benchmarks of what this might look like as a success if i was going to start this project here's the direction that i would start to take it but essentially, if as a leader, if you lay expectations and, and this could go for whether it's client work or it could go for stuff inside of the company, it could go for processes, it doesn't really matter. But kind of handing over that reality to them and letting them have autonomy in developing that has been a huge, huge success point for me in managing people. Because at the end of the day, 
they want to be led. They want to know how can I be a better person as far as like a better employee, a better staff member? How can I have some personal growth? But if they're told everything to do left and right, here's step one, two, three, four, five, they're just hands. Mm -hmm. And that's not how people want to be seen. They want to be able to solve complex problems. We have a really important goal inside of our company around uh, client retention and trying to maintain a 75% client retention rate. Most of the time we have cl uh, clients come on for a first project. Our goal is to do such a great job on that project, give them such an amazing experience and make that relationship really strong that they do a, either another project or they sign a retainer and they're working with us in a monthly format. And I am not a part of any of that now. The staff is fully functioning inside of that. And so, yeah, so to answer your question, I would say the biggest thing that I have seen is that they are asking for um, more advice on ha how to handle specific complex um, situations as opposed to just asking for how do I do X, Y, and Z, like actual tangible, you know, processes individually. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I wonder why that is. Um, I mean, are this are these issues that you feel are really unique that people are coming to you with? Um, in some cases, some, some could be repeatable as a process for how to handle a specific, let's say, a, a process within, uh, oh, great example. We have HubSpot is always evolving. Obviously we work inside of HubSpot constantly. And so there's a new feature, a new function inside of HubSpot. We have clients that need to utilize that. HubSpot now has a payment system. The payment system is phenomenal, but it's only really been around for about six months today as far as like being super adopted within the community stuff that we can really promote. And so it's it's literally like the Wild West out there with with integrating payment systems and, you know, people getting into QuickBooks and tying in their their stuff into the different programs. And so HubSpot has come in and they're like, we're going to make this a standard thing. And so how to implement that is not really documented yet. There are people who have been doing it, integrations and hacks and all these different things. And so we are now kind of leading the charge or one of the companies who are leading the charge as far as what that might look like when you're integrating payment systems, okay? So my staff is in charge of, of doing that. Now, I, I can give direction, I can give my advice for what I think that would be at a high level, but they're essentially the ones who are coming up with a strategy. And so when it's something brand new like that, they need, they need more resources, they need more guidance, they need more, um, more ideas to bounce uh, or people to bounce ideas off of with. And so they have come to me or it's a leadership meeting or whatever it might be. And we're discussing um, how do we collectively solve this problem? We're discussing where do we go for resources? And we're kind of looking at it from a perspective of what can we do to empower you to solve this on your own, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The reason I asked that is that I think it's curious to, or it's interesting, and I would recommend you be curious around like what, what has changed for them that makes them feel like they can't do some of this without my involvement? Like what mm -hmm. has shifted? Because um, it could be Sometimes, I mean, sometimes people just are a little insecure around like what they know and they want to mm -hmm. make sure they're on the right path. And it's always good to, especially with someone who's incredibly capable sure. to, uh, you know, reflect back to them. Well, what would you do if you had a magic wand or who else could you reach out to? Or, mm -hmm. you know, what are kind of coaching them through it instead of, you know, telling them how to do it, which doesn't sound like you're doing that anyway. Mm -hmm. But it's just interesting. I've noticed for myself when I've got someone who's like, you know, on this path of feeling a little insecure about it, I'm like, what? What have I done to create that? Or is there yeah. anything I've done to create that environment? So that's interesting. Yeah, great point. Yeah. It's definitely, definitely something to, to think through. I like that. Yeah. Well, this has been a lovely cool. conversation, John. I'm so excited yeah. for you. So what, what is next for you and, and for your business? What, what, is, what do you think is coming up in the next year or two? Well, so we've made a lot of interesting pivots lately, um, especially looking from a sales and marketing perspective not necessarily a pivot as much as an expansion of what we can do. So a lot of what we've focused on in the last several years has been a lot of upmarket, large sale, large transaction kind of projects. And 
Those are great. We continue to do those. It's making up the majority of our business today, but we are expanding. One of the things that we spend a lot of time and effort into is, is giving away free assets for HubSpot users and the HubSpot marketplace and free themes. And we've been doing that for years and we're expanding that side of the business to now start creating very low barrier, low dollar amount transaction items such as migrations and a lot of really interesting concepts. So um, it's it's kind of coincides with, you know, who knows what the economy is doing and, and where we're at today. And who knows, six months from now, we might not be able to, to have these large, you know, deals as, as our primary source of business. So rather than keeping all of our eggs in just one basket, we're exploring and starting to create some other mm -hmm. facets and some other lines that we can we can number one, help people with and number two, expand what we can provide uh, from ourselves as well. So yeah, so that's, that's pretty, it, pretty much it. That's, that's kind of where we're going and, and what we're doing today. Kind that's of two great. sides of the business. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's great. Yeah. Well, we will check back in with you in a few months and see how things are going. So, um, but thank you so much for your time today. Best of luck to you and, and for the, for the upcoming year. So especially with your team, it's great. Oh, thank you so much, Kendra. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you for joining this exciting episode. We hope this discussion brings you closer to a better, healthier, and more rewarding workplace everyone deserves to be a part of. If you want more content like this, be sure to subscribe to the podcast at turningthecornerllc.com forward slash podcast. Don't forget to share this with your friends in the corporate world. And together, let's make this space a hub of growth and job satisfaction. If everyone loves where they are, they can always give their best without regrets. That's all for now. See you on the next one.